played Superman 64, also known as the worst video game to ever exist, in glorious virtual reality. And you know what? Now that I've played it in VR, I gotta say... Yeah, it still sucks. I made a better Superman game by myself in Horizon Worlds. Yeah, Horizon Worlds. But in all seriousness, I think the port that was made in Superman 64 for VR was done really well. It was done by Wacka Media, and regardless of the fact that he decided to port the worst game ever, it brings back all the same frustrating nostalgia of the original game. He was very careful though not to infringe on copyright, and it's actually called Superhuman 6 instead of Superman. And you're not saving Jimmy or Lois, he's got his own names for those people. Now one thing to note is this game actually only has the first three objectives in VR. It's not a complete port, but honestly, most people never made it that far anyway. In a minute, I'll tell you how you can get your very own port of this game, assuming you're willing to torture yourself for half an hour. There are a few things I thought about whenever I was playing this port. Flying as Superman at a painfully slow pace made me realize just how badly we need an official virtual reality Superman game. We've never had a really great Superman game, so I really hope whenever James Gunn's Superman movie comes out, it'll spark somebody somewhere to make an official Superman game for virtual reality because I think that would be awesome. Believe it or not, even in 64 bits, it was fun flying around in virtual reality all over the old metropolis that I remembered from when I was a kid. Yeah, the graphics are terrible, but you wouldn't believe just how fun it was to just slowly fly around and pretend like I was the Man of Steel. Of course, I can do that in this game I made too. Another thing this port did for me is it really is like the original Superman 64 game. It causes the same frustrations, the same irritations, but it was so nostalgic, I kind of enjoyed playing it. When I was a kid, I took it very seriously and I tried really hard not to get hurt or die or get through the rings perfectly. I was lighthearted this time. I didn't really care too much. The game starts off just like the original, only this time, instead of being forced through the portal, you kind of get to fly through the portal yourself at a very slow pace. That was a nice little touch he put in there that wasn't in the original game. Being in VR also makes it so clear how bad the 64's graphics were. I mean, I saw things up close that I never even realized was there as a kid because the TV wasn't right against my eyes. By the way, that kid looks creepy. It was also really cool getting to see Jimmy and Lois and Dr. Emil Hamilton and Lex Luthor up close at the end of the game. Well, at the end of the three levels that he poured it over. But it was neat getting to see all those old graphics up close because not only were they terrible, but they were so surprisingly close to the cartoon for back then. I was really surprised at how well they were able to make something so terrible look pretty good. There was a lot of flickering in different spots and gaps that were not connected. I can't remember if that was in the original game or not. Uh, they pretty much intended you in that game to only fly through the rings. Oh, by the way, pro tip for the original game, you can turn those rings off by putting it on easy mode. Can't do that in this port, but that was what I did as a kid. Speaking of which, even though he didn't put an easy mode, he made this incredibly simple. You just fly by pulling the trigger on either your right or left hand, and if you pull both of them, you go a little bit faster. And the grab button is only used to pick up the cars, which is kind of tricky. It takes a while to get used to that. You kind of just grab and flick at the back of the car the best you can, using one hand to fly and one hand to grab. Other than that, there's not really any buttons. Your interfaces are on your wrist. Uh, it shows you which direction to go on your right wrist, and your left wrist has the timer. And also, you just use your hand to touch any buttons to advance the screen of the game, if you need to for any reason. I was pretty surprised at how fun it was. Let me know in the comments if you want to see him make more than just the three levels, because I was actually kind of disappointed whenever I got to the end of the first three objectives. I was kind of like, huh, I, I want to play more. So let me know if you think it would be fun to play more, or if it would be an absolute waste of time. If you want to play the port for yourself, click on the link in the description. And if for some weird reason you're interested in this game that I never finished in Horizon Worlds, let me know in the comments because I'd be kind of curious to find out if it would be worth doing any more with. It's not finished. There's really no game to it at all at this point. You can just mess with Steel's equipment and fly around and, you know, blast things and stuff. But besides that, there's really nothing to it. But if you're interested, just let me know and I might consider doing more to it. Until next time.